the first and foremost is going to be your pulmonary stenosis the flow across the pulmonary valve is restricted that is the first component the second component is your right ventricle hypertrophy because to obstruction to the flow the right ventricle has to hypertrophy and the third abnormality is the ventricular septal defect a defect between the right ventricle and the left ventricle and the last one is the override of aorta here you can see the aorta receiving the blood through the vsd from the right ventricle and also from the left ventricle so it receives majority from the left ventricle due to some override the blood from the right ventricle also goes into the aorta these are the four components of tetralogy of fallow coming to the first component vsd here you can see the vsd what is more important is the adjectives which are added to the vsd it is single large non restrictive that means there is no obstruction to flow across the vsd it's a very big vsd and the location it is in the sub aortic part here is aorta is sub aortic part and in the perimembranous region of the septum so sub aortic perimembranous vsd sometime it can be located in the muscular part and it causes a large right to left shunt from the right ventricle it goes via the vsd to the left ventricle the second component is going to be your right ventricular outflow tract obstruction your infundibular stenosis here the obstruction can be at multiple level but most commonly it is at the infundibulum okay the subvalvular subvalvular part is a infundibular part in 50% of the patient it is going to be the subvalvular infundibular stenosis but what is very important is it can be dynamic apart from being fixed okay and the second commonest part is your pulmonary valve which can occur at 10% of the patient and above the pulmonary valve supravalvular pulmonary artery it can be in 10% so most common is going to be your infundibular part another 10% it is going to be pulmonary valve and another 10% it is going to be supravalvular that is in the pulmonary artery and you can have obstruction at multiple level at in 30% of the patient and if there is complete occlusion across the rvot it is called pulmonary atresia these are all the various location where the obstruction can happen across the right ventricle outflow tract so there is a obstruction across the right ventricular outflow tract to overcome this obstruction there is right ventricular hypertrophy and your rv pressure goes up okay when the rv pressure goes beyond the left ventricular pressure this gradient will divert the blood across the vsd into the left ventricle so there is a right to left shunt by doing this your pulmonary blood flow is reduced which causes hypoxemia okay in the newborn period imagine if the pda is closed and there is no collateral blood supply that means there is no pulmonary blood flow the pulmonary blood flow it is going to be very very low so more severe the obstruction across the right ventricular outflow tract the more cyanose the child going to be